past few years, Big Finish has been celebrating the 8th of March, International Women's Day, with some box set releases that center around the women of the Doctor Who universe. There was 8th of March Part 1 in 2019, and then last year they released 8th of March 2, Protectors of Time, and now we have the 8th of March 3, Strange Chemistry, which has got two stories in it. The first one is The Ghost of Alchemy by Louise Jameson, which sees the fourth Doctor and Leela meet Marie Curie in the 1920s while she's doing her trip of America in 1921. And the second story is Fairies at the Bottom of the Garden by Carissa Hamilton Bannis, which sees Missy become young Amelia Pond's therapist while she's having a tough time at school, and Caitlin Blackwood reprises her role as young Amelia Pond from the TV series. So this is teenage 16-year-old Amy Pond in Big Finish meeting Missy. So it's a very fun combination of stories. I liked the 8th of March too. It had three solid releases uh, which spanned multiple awesome women in the Doctor Who universe uh, and I think with 8th of March 3 however it was a much it, it was a good decision to sort of pare it down a little bit. You've got a four-part story formatted like the 1970s Doctor Who, and now you've got an hour-long story with Missy and Amelia Pond, similar to the Revived series format. Best of both worlds. And even though this is a fourth Doctor story, make no mistake, the women here are the front and centre standouts of the box set. So the first one here is The Ghost of Alchemy by Louise Jameson. Like I said, the TARDIS lands in 1921 New York accidentally, and I think this is quite early on in Leela adventures with the doctor leela is still trying to learn how to be a civilized person after her years of savagery as being part of the tribe of the sever team but she meets marie curie uh, who is the woman who discovered radium and was able to discover its practical applications in terms of uh, medicine and treatment uh, in, in trying to cure cancer and this was of course before it was used as a incredible tool of destruction as marie curie was harnessing powers and energies that that was even stronger than lightning, which is uh, one hell of a scary thing. But Marie Curie here is played by Holly Jackson Walters, who's a friend of Louise Jameson. And I think this is clearly a big passion project for Louise Jameson. Not only does she play Leela here, there's a lot of meta narrative stuff happening in The Ghost of Alchemy, where you're able to get Louise Jameson as Leela, uh, give motivational speeches and talks to Marie Curie. And also one detail that I really, really liked is that this takes place in 1921, when Marie Curie was touring the United States and she meets president warren harding because she goes to america and she's given a gram of radium and what i love in this story is that there's a running joke about how president warren harding is an incredibly boring person to be around who is not a very good speaker and is just <laughs> and everyone seems to underestimate him and it's his wife florence who is the power of the pair uh, i don't know how true that um, i don't know how true to life that dynamic was uh, but in this box set uh, she is the one who wears the trousers in the relationship in real life, Warren did refer to Florence as the boss of their relationship. Uh, she didn't even wear a wedding ring in public, which was very controversial for the time. So the Ghost of Alchemy, there's an assassination attempt on Marie Curie from another scientist, a massive misogynist who does not believe that Marie Curie can have done the things that she is purported to have done, who thinks that she is hiding behind her husband to get all of the glory, and thinks that he is the one who will be able to try and cure cancer in the near future, and seeks to steal the radium. A lot of shenanigans ensue, which result in Marie Curie and Leela being uh, held hostage on a train. And Leela uses this opportunity to give Marie Curie a bit of a pep talk. Let's listen to a clip from A Ghost of Alchemy. Oh, how is your shoulder? There's blood. Truly, a surface wound. I am a survivor. I can see that. I envy you. Oh, you cannot envy me. I have no knowledge, no learning. All oh, that can be acquired. It's confidence that can't be taught. Oh, but it can. I beg to differ. Listen to me. Never let them see they have affected you. The doctor insists we maintain a sense of humor, although I am not certain what that is. Keep eye contact with the enemy at all times and use their names. Breathe evenly, always. Memorize exits, entrances, windows and doors and Visualize a route away from here, from this situation. I'm frightened, Miss Leela. How can we escape a moving train? Hear this. I am kidnapped, but you are a hostage. What is the difference? You are valuable. Always remember that, Madame Marie Curie. 
Your life is one of value. There's some really wonderful scenes between Leela and uh, Marie Curie. And I think that Holly Jackson Walters does a terrific job playing the role of a woman who does not want to be in the public eye, who hates public speaking, who does have a bit of an inferiority complex and is also just very very tired who has been doing research for a very long time and it is also have uh, it is also having detrimental uh, effects on her health as well as outlined over the course of the story uh, and how forces such as radioactivity radium in this case can be a force of great good and a force of great evil there is also a lot of great tom baker stuff as well he gets caught up in misadventures with one of marie curie's um, hosts who have so who've, uh, who've brought her over to new york from france and tom baker is an absolute hoot in this box set as he runs up and down a moving train trying to rescue leela and marie curie and shouting and using his scarf to try and swing onto a moving train all of that stuff is a lot of fun but this is indisputably leela and marie curie's story this is one of the best leela stories that i've listened to for quite a while and obviously it's written by louise jameson no one knows the character better than her and i love that sweet side but also the idea that this is like an early stage leela where she is just so resentful of having to wear the pretty dresses and the, the the shoes that encumber her abilities to run and fight and also how she is a little bit naive as well and she gets taken advantage of a couple of times over the course of the story it takes some really cool twists and turns i, I do like the the multiple pronged approach where you've got uh, leela on the train and you've got the doctor trying to pursue the train a lot of fun the dynamics between uh, warren harding and his wife are a lot of fun to watch over the course of the story and i think there is also something to be said of just the simplistic motive of the main villain of the story is is just a massive misogynist and while some people may think it's a little bit cartoonish while listening to it as someone who has spent a lot of time on fandom youtube and on fandom twitter a lot of people genuinely do think the way that that guy does so you may think it's simplistic i also think it's quite accurate now one of the other big selling points of this box set however is the story which sees Missy meeting a younger version of Amelia Pond, played by Caitlin Blackwood, and Michelle Gomez is reprising her role. So, you've got Caitlin Blackwood playing a 16-year-old Amelia Pond, who is having difficulties at school, who years in the past was fighting back against therapists and her family her adoptive aunt and uncle because her parents have gone missing uh, they were taken away by the cracks in the skin of the universe but nobody else really knows what's going on with that she decides she has had enough so she decides to break out of her house uh, when she's meant to be grounded and go on some misadventures and she meets a fortune teller who predicts some weird stuff happening in her garden and that she had an encounter with somebody a raggedy man seven years ago that she she has been trained by many therapists and members of her family in order to to force her into forgetting that it happened and that the raggedy man did not exist and then the next day she goes to a brand new therapist after beating the crap out of the school bully and she finds there not the therapist that she was expecting but a mysterious woman with mary poppins vibes let's play a clip from fairies at the bottom of the garden are you dr milner the therapist. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, who else would I be, dear? Dr. David Milner. Uh -huh. Well, it's a it's a woman's name in Iceland. Sit down. Right. So, how is this going to work? Are you going to ask me questions? Oh yes. Mhm. Mm yeah. I'll be asking you a lot of questions. You're just staring at me. Yes, well, I'm trying to get a feel for you, one might say. Develop a taste. Are you going to eat me? Well, you know, I haven't decided yet. You're weird. Comes with a profession. Now, you can't exactly be normal if you choose to listen to people whine about their problems all day now, can you? I'm not whining. Not whining yet. But once I begin asking some general questions about your despicable emotional state, we will be drowning in self-pity. I didn't ask to come here. Point proven. Rest assured, at least half of what's wrong with you right now can be blamed on hormonal imbalances due to the primitive human metamorphosis you call puberty. 200 years ago, nobody would have complained about a girl your age acting like a rabid polecat. But in this day and age, the only exciting period in your woefully short life cycle is considered abnormal. Is this part of the session? No, yes, of course, dear. 
Michelle Gomez really is wonderful, and this is the first time that I've listened to her on Big Finish, even though she has had previous box sets dedicated to her in the past. This is my introduction to Missy in Big Finish, and I do think that Carissa Hamilton Bannis has done a terrific job at capturing her eccentricities and her manic energy without making it come across really obnoxious and over the top. As, you know, I, I like Michelle Gomez a lot in the TV series, but I did not enjoy the way that she was characterized in Series 8 specifically. But I think in Fairies at the Bottom of the Garden, the dynamic between Amelia and Missy is the head and shoulders standout selling point of the story, and I wish there was maybe a little bit more of it. There's only like two scenes in the course of the story where it is Amelia and Missy going toe-to-toe -to -toe in these therapy sessions, even though I think that's where the story finds its most interesting dynamic and it really finds its most interesting, uh, its interesting dialogue and characterizations. There's this subplot as well, the titular fairies at the bottom of the garden, which Amelia discovers in her garden, of course, as the title implies, and she's trying to figure out what's happening. She gets scared and she runs away, and Missy takes great interest in them and wants to try and harness their power. That bit's fine, but I think the main issue with fairies at the bottom of the garden is that it gets caught up in a random tangent about midway through where it explains how Missy got to be Amelia's therapist and I don't think the story needed it. She's a time traveller who has access to vortex manipulators and dimensional portals and all this stuff. She can just be Amelia's therapist and you need zero prerequisite. That's just a fun thing that Missy decided that she wanted to do that day but there's a like a 10 or 15 minute tangent when Missy, uh, the the, the plot stops dead so that Missy can have a flashback to how she meets up with Amelia in the first place, meets somebody who she names Derek, played by Homer Toddywala, who's a lot of fun in this story, but why did you have to stop the plot for like 10 to 15 minutes to get us to this starting point, which we didn't really need a prerequisite for? That being said, the rest of it was terrific. Like I said, the performances with Caitlin Blackwood and Michelle Gomez are terrific. Caitlin in particular, towards the end of the box set, when she gets all shouty, she, yeah, she does sound like a young Karen Gillan. She does sound like this. Th this does sound like how a young, angry, passionate Amelia Pond would sound. I completely bought that. I thought that she stepped into those shoes again really, really admirably. Uh, someone in the chat asking, which timeline is this Missy from? Post-Series 8 or before Series 8? I think this is before Series 8. My interpretation of it is that this is Missy trying to find the Doctor before the events of Dark Water and Death in Heaven. That's my interpretation, but it doesn't really matter, to be honest, in my opinion. There's no mention of a Scottish angry eyebrows Doctor, so I presume that this could be before she's met him again in Series 8, but that's my that's just my interpretation. The family dynamic, I really, really appreciated where Amelia has got her adoptive aunt and uncle, and the uncle's a plumber who is trying really, really hard to be understanding and hold things together, but Amelia is being a proper handful and is just being a an angry hormonal teenager. It was a very ordinary and humanising way to characterise Amelia Pond, where uh, yeah, she's got a lot of issues because of the raggedy man who appeared in her garden seven years ago and her parents have disappeared and no one quite knows what's happened. That's going to give Amelia a lot of issues, but there's just all the general stuff as well where she's angry at the world, she wants to rebel, she's been cooped up in her bedroom, she's not able to go and meet her friends and go to the arcade all that good stuff and Ledworth is a small town and she's got a big imagination all of that stuff was really endearing and I liked that and like I said the scenes between Missy and Amelia in the therapy sessions are outstanding and I loved the and I loved the way how Amelia just took no shit from anyone so the 8th of March Strange Chemistry overall is a strong box set with two very strong stories that are formatted very differently. Variety is the spice of life and I think Strange Chemistry does a great job at representing the women of the Doctor Who universe and also on the periphery of the Doctor Who universe as well. Real life figures such as Marie Curie and also Florence Harding, the, the first lady in 1921. This is obviously a release that is to commemorate International Women's Day and it meets that criteria very, very effectively. But there's also two really 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 good stories here as well from two different corners of the Doctor Who universe. Tom Baker's a hoot, Michelle Gomez is great as expected and I'm glad that this was my introduction to her in Big Finish. She's just such a riot as well and you can tell she's having so much fun revisiting this role. Strange Chemistry gets a, a, a strong recommendation. I think 8th of March 2, Protectors of Time, had three decent but overall pretty muddled stories that a year on, I don't really remember much from. I think I'm going to remember 
uh, very specific things about strange chemistry like a year from now i think this is a box set that is really going to hold up and stand the test of time because it is much more focused i think having just those two stories rather than three stories with all of these crossover characters uh, i think that means that this one's able to just tell better standalone stories that will stand the test of time much better so strange chemistry i do recommend it <laughs>